In this video, we are going to learn about the intercompatibility between Axis VM and Alplan. We are going to transfer the Alplan model into Axis VM, perform a structural analysis, and then take those results back to Alplan where we will do the finalized drawing. This type of work greatly improves the work speed, as there is no need to make, read, and interpret any type of engineering reports. So let us start by exporting the model. In front of us, we have a simple 3D concrete structure consisting of a 20 cm thick flat slab supported by two columns and two shear walls. We will go to File tab, select Export and choose the IFC data. In the Open menu, we have to choose which buildings do we want to export and by clicking OK and determining the file export location, we can now save the file. A log file opens up and you can see which of the entities were exported. Let's now import the file into Axis VM. We go to File, Import, search for our model and open it. An import command window opens and here we can adjust some additional parameters. In order to make a correct analysis, it is important that the elements are correctly joined together. This can be done automatically by adjusting the element joining range. Now the shape of our structure has been inserted, but we have still not defined the element. We do that by going to the Elements tab and choosing the Architectural Model option. Here we can choose which of the members we want to define. We can also choose the type of starting format for the structure or leave it at Auto Detection. We select all of the elements and click OK. A new window opens up where we have to define all of the materials, geometry and some additional parameters for each of the elements. For wall and column we can also determine the end releases or even add an additional support at the bottom. As you can see, now the elements have been defined and we have also assigned supports beneath the columns and the shear walls. We can now start adding loads to the structure. We will add a 15 kN per square meter load to the top of the slab. After completing that, we will mesh all of the domains. We will do a quick check and perform the linear statical analysis. Now we already have some of the results, so here for instance we can see deflections, but this is not what we are interested in, we are interested in uh, the reinforced concrete design, so this is why we will go to the RC design tab and start designing the concrete. We click on Reinforcement Parameters, select all of the domains and click OK. A new window opens up where we can define type of concrete, maximum aggregate size, type of steel, structure class and exposure class. We can also define the size of reinforcement, the thickness of the elements and some additional parameters and all of these parameters will determine the precision of the required reinforcement. We can also input cracking and shear check parameters. After clicking OK, the software has already calculated the required reinforcement. We can go to top view and check that the required reinforcement at the top, bottom, in X and Y direction. Besides calculating the required reinforcement, we can also perform some additional checks, like for instance, column reinforcement checks, or punching analysis. We can do a punching analysis by selecting that option, clicking on the column and clicking OK. A new window opens up where you can set some additional parameters and after confirming you can see the punching area on the slab. You can also see the calculation based on your chosen building norm. As we see in this case, no additional reinforcement is required for punching.
Similarly, we can also for instance check the pad foundation. So we do that by selecting the support and clicking OK. A new window opens up where we define the size and the type of the pad foundation. We must also input the soil profile. So you can choose the soil profile from the library, select the depth of the material. We can also add the backfill. And now we can add the soil profile. To complete the footing design, we must also define some of the reinforcement parameters. For instance, the thickness of the shear reinforcement, the distances between the rebars and the distances between the shear reinforcement. After confirming, we already have the complete design of the pad with all of the dimension, all of the stresses and the reinforcement that is required for this type of pad. In this video, we are more interested in how to export the reinforcement parameters into Alplan, so we will start doing this by exporting the slab reinforcement requirements. By using element filters, we will first isolate the slab, and then export it as an Alplan ASF file. Back in our plan, open the Import FVA Files option. There we should select the exported ASF model and transfer it to an empty drawing in our plan. To complete the transfer, click Import and OK. Switch to Engineering and open the FVA reinforcement color image. A new dialog opens up where you select which type of reinforcement do you want to see and design. We will first design the bottom reinforcement, so we should click the bottom reinforcement checkbox. After confirming, two new windows open up in our right hand side. The upper one represents the required reinforcement in y direction, while the bottom one represents the required reinforcement in x direction. We will now start adding reinforcement to the section. Let's use area reinforcement for the bottom part of the slab. For this, we will use the automatic span reinforcement option. A window opens up where you can define some of the additional parameters. It is important that we add the basic reinforcement and that the bottom reinforcement in both directions is checked. We should select the reinforcement area. Escape to confirm, select that we are doing the bottom reinforcement. If we wish, we can also add hooks to the bars. We select the edges and confirm. In the next window, we can change the spacing and the diameter of free bars and the area of reinforcement is automatically updated. We can also choose meshes as our rebar elements. As you can see, the required reinforcement graphics have been updated and we only need a bit of reinforcement now at the edges and some in X direction in the middle of the span. Let's now do the top reinforcement above the columns. We will help ourselves by defining the area of reinforcement by drawing a rectangle around the shape that we want to reinforce and then offsetting that rectangle by a distance of anchor length.
After completing the offset, we can reinforce the top part of the slab with the area reinforcement. I hope this video has been helpful and let us know if there are any further questions about the process.